Let's rock and roll, boys. Hello and welcome back to another Nintendo podcast uh, because you love listening to every Nintendo podcast that's on the internet, so why not listen to ours? I'm Matt Schultz, your host today. I'm joined by Austin Cummings. Hey, Matt. And Daniel Tortelli. I'm sorry, Daniel. Hello, hello, <laughs> everyone. Uh, Daniel, I'm so welcome sorry. to Matt, who speaks Italian. <laughs> Filippelli. Mm-hmm. Um, you so speak a stereotype. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bippity boppity. This is it's a Mario show. We're all about mm-hmm. we're all about that plumber. Yeah, do the Mario, we say. <laughs> anyway, so uh, we can cut all that out. Um, nope. Welcome to another Nintendo podcast, episode twenty-seven. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit today about things we've been playing, specifically <laughs> two games. Mm-hmm. We've got on one corner. Um, Starlink Battle for Atlas, which we've been playing a lot of. And in another corner, we've got Wargroove, which if you've been listening to our show at all, aka uh, Austin's mother, then you know we've been really hyped for this game. So just to kick it off, Danny, you are probably our resident Starlink Battle for Atlas uh, uh, connoisseur or uh, main like player out of all of us. You've played it. (laughs) <laughs> you played it the most, for sure. I've definitely put a lot of hours into it. I have battled it. Atlas. Um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so, have you fought Atlas yet? No spoilers, but have you battled the Atlas? Ooh. The Almanac, do you fight him? Cloud Atlas right. is now mine. <laughs> <laughs> You're our biggest Cloud Atlas fan of, on the podcast. <laughs> Tell us about it. How is Halle Berry's performance? Is it better than Storm in X-Men 1 or X-Men 2? X-Men 1, she has the African accent. X-Men 2 <laughs> doesn't have an African a- accent. Tell me about oh. it. Do you know what happens to a toad when it's struck by lightning? The same thing that happens to everything else. Now I'm just thinking of all the crazy crossovers with the Disney Fox deal about to happen. Okay. <laughs> Bring it in. Right pull them back. Pull them yeah, back. Here we go. So, okay. Uh, we all were really excited about this game because all, all big Star Fox fans here. And um, the, mm-hmm. the game itself. We're Foxers. We're fo- yeah, we're foxers. We're boys here, and uh, <laughs> we rock and roll. We do rock and roll. And that game, as when it first when it first uh, was um, shown off at E3, it was a huge shock of the show, right? Like everyone was like, mm-hmm. "Oh my God, Miyamoto's out here." There's an R wing on the screen. This is the Ubisoft. Like Ubisoft really hit it out of the park during uh, their E3 um, show. So. That was probably the highlight for me, though. And uh, ever since then, we've been talking about this game. Obviously, it came out. It was more Toys to Life. You can get it without Toys to Life. We did that. And uh, we've been playing it. But, Danny, you've played a lot of it. You've 100%ed a few planets. Also, you are really, you were really into No Man's Sky as well. So how does this game compare to you for that, to, to No Man's Sky? Do you, are you enjoying it more? And have you gotten like your Star Fox fix from it? Your Star Fix Fox. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, 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 yeah. Oh, wow. Say that again. <laughs> she says um, she talks. <laughs> um, so compared to No Man's Sky, let's let's start there. Um, I would say I enjoy it more in the fact that it feels like there's more purpose to it. Mm-hmm. Um, no Man's Sky is a very open world. Um, it's uh, procedurally generated, um, so the the whole universe is is created by the AI right, of the right, game. Right. Um, and it's like 18 quintillion star systems you can visit, That's which is stupid. insane. So you could literally play What's that game. What's your two favorite? And... <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I tried renaming one after a water planet from Star Wars, because you can rename them too. Mm. Um, and uh, it wouldn't, uh, I-, I couldn't figure out how to do the renaming because I'm such a noob uh, at No Man's Sky. I'm just like, oh, screw it, I'm gonna go explore another planet. Anyways, uh, that one was really cool. You could go underwater too. Um, you can't do that in Battle for Atlas. Uh, maybe in the second one. But so compared to that, it does yeah. have more. Yeah, it does have more purpose because you can get lost in No Man's Sky. There's like one main storyline and like two or three side storylines you could follow and switch back and forth mm-hmm. from, which is similar. Uh, since we've all played Battle for Atlas, we know that you could switch between the main storyline of saving um, Saint Grand, um, uh, doing Battling Fox Alice, stuff yeah. and doing some other or, uh, and Wolf stuff, mm-hmm. yeah, and battling right, Alice. He's got the big globe um, on his back. And you gotta shoot him, shoot him in the hand so he drops right. the planet. <laughs> right, yeah, the glowing, yeah, glow on the back. Um, <laughs> it's always the but, hands. Uh, it's always, mm, the, it's hands. always the hands. Go for the palms. <laughs> 
the master hand. Oh, Whoa. dang. So, um, crazy boy. But uh, he was in Star Fox all along. Crazy frog. Lose direction. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> uh, you could lose direction very easily and spend hours doing absolutely nothing and feeling like you're doing a lot. Whereas here, no matter what mission you're on, you still feel like you're accomplishing something. And there is still some element of feeling like you can get lost in it, too. Um, as a Star Fox game, ooh, I know you mentioned a couple episodes, Matt. Uh, this is a game that has Star Fox in it. I tend to lean just ever so slightly towards you and agreeing with that. But I, I do feel like they did a good enough job of maybe scratching some Star Fox itch in the meantime with right. all that wolf content yeah. fuck, with everything fuck, else. Um, so. Star Fox fleas. Let me, let's talk a little bit about that transitioning, uh, Danny. So the game itself was created by Ubisoft Toronto, but then Virtuous Games, they're responsible for taking that base uh, Starlink game. Could use a little help here. Can you hear me? Optimizing it for Switch. So... Um, mm-hmm. They, I'm sure Ubisoft Toronto probably made some of the content for uh, Fox itself, but it was optimized for the Switch version with Virtuous Games. And uh, they've kind of talked a bit about the creative director of Starlink is uh, L- Laurent Malville. And they talked a little bit about the collaboration process uh, for how this game kind of came to be. But it feels like, you know, especially when you see it in the same uh, in the same stage that once featured the Mario plus Rabbids game for the Switch that Ubisoft has had some cool collaborations. And yeah. I agree with that sentiment, Danny. I mean, definitely has more direction uh, than No Man's Sky, but it's you know, a different type of game. We can talk about more of that in a second. But also, the uh, I, I would say that like I feel often when I'm playing it that it kind of is closer to a Star Fox game than I thought. Right. More so even than like a kind of generic Ubisoft cast of heroes that are instantly forgettable. I feel, um, but Star, Star Fox I think brings a lot to it, and the even using. Your super move that brings in like the really fun Star Fox theme and one of the <laughs> yeah. other members of Star Fox to fight. It has a lot of uh, personality and identity that is classic Star Fox, and I enjoy that like mm-hmm. element yeah. of it. It's really, I think it's really cool and believable how they were like, uh, you know, the Lilat system exists in the same space that, you know, the Atlas star system exists. And like, right. it almost, this Atlas system feels just as small as Lilat, you know, like, mm-hmm. and like condensed. It's only like, you know, what, seven or eight planets. Um, right. And I don't know, like, I, so yeah, they do a good job, but also you're right. Both of you are right. I think since I said that, and since I've been playing it for so long, I feel <laughs> like I'm like, I go back to the game because I've, I want to play as Star Fox. I'm in an R wing most of the time. Right. Though I've gotten better at like you. Ha- you understand that you actually need to be upgrading multiple ships because sometimes you are going to your ship is going to crash and you need to. You know mm-hmm. what they want you to do is plop the toy on there and buy right. the other toy and plop that on there. For but, sure. but it's toys to death. We don't have any toys. <laughs> we only have this digital game, and we That's only want right. to play the R wing. So don't force me to do otherwise. But toys what to do death. you think about it? Like. You're hearing Star Fox's voice. The, you don't ha- when you change ships. You're not changing characters or pilots, which is no. weird. or even your special right. ability. You may, you may, but you, yes, you can keep. Yeah, Fox. you can. You can, but you can you can like pop Fox in basically to the the next ship that you have, and you're still hearing Fox's voice. You're still getting, and so for me, I'm like, yeah, this. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna play that new Star Fox game in my head. like. That's what I'm thinking in my head. Like, oh yeah, I can't wait to play Star Fox tonight. But it's not Star right. Fox. But so. Good on them for partnering with Nintendo or for impressing uh, Miyamoto enough to be like, you should take this property and put it in it because we're not doing anything with it right now. So, mm-hmm. um, because I think it really helped them. And I'm going to imagine, I don't know this for sure, Danny, but I want to imagine the majority of their sales are on the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, I don't have the exact numbers, but from everything I was reading, uh, the Switch version is is crushing both right. uh, Xbox and PlayStation. I think the last one I read was like beating the other two combined. Right. Um, and I think that Star Fox aspect of it pushed it to that. Um, there's so many stories of, of even other YouTubers and, and uh, game reviewers who, when this game was first, first teased, I think it was E3 2017, everyone was like, oh, cool space space shooter, you know, yeah. uh, starship exploring, whatever. And then in 2018, they're like, okay, we get a little bit more info on that space shooter, um, space explorer. And then that very last part of that trailer... Right where they show Fox, everyone was like, ooh. <laughs> um, so yeah. uh, that, I think, it went from a game, everyone was like, ah, I'm sure that's fine, 
to I feel like I have to have that because that's going to be the only Star Fox we get in a long right. time and it looks great and, you know it's been a few years since we had Star Fox Zero on the Wii U and it, uh, so I kind of want to ask like a larger question that's not specific to Starlink but what do you guys feel like when you play this game thinking about Star Fox in the context of this style of experience versus that of a traditional Star Fox game which is kind of a question mark because Star Fox doesn't have that many games and if they're not a remake of Star Fox 64 they're kind of random right Star Fox Adventure is more like a Zelda game Star Fox Assault is kind of a strange hybrid like ground combat and space one Star Fox Command on the DS is a little bit more like a tactical map based thing which is also right, like Star Fox the... 2 on the Super Nintendo so yeah I don't think right. Star Fox if anything I feel like Star Fox's identity I almost associate more with Smash Bros and his strange up B fire move and these other things that right. were never expressed in the games, but he has in uh, Smash. Um, I think most new Nintendo fans feel the same way, especially if you're, you know, 18 or 19 years old right now or younger. Like, that's mostly your experience with Star Fox. Um, I mean, growing up, I, at least I, I, know, I, I know for myself and probably for us, like, going, Star Fox was like going to your cousin's house or your friend's house or whoever had it, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh my cousins. <laughs> only cousins my cousin had it and he was always like constantly uh bragging about oh i beat all i beat the whole game in oh, like yeah. th one sitting this time or three hours the game's super short look at me it's and mission really accomplished not just mission complete. but we would also yeah. we'd also love jumping on for four player and playing four player together and like that was star fox and as nintendo's done with other franchises right they've like all right how do we reinvent this and evolve it and star fox is like this great IP that they're still trying to figure out something. Yeah, I would argue and... they don't really know what to do with it. You know, Miyamoto's always yeah. like, he's not going to bring back a franchise unless he can put a new twist on it. And for Star Fox right. Zero, that twist was having the third person flight of Star Fox traditionally, right. both in dogfight and linear form. Ha! But then on the gamepad, having a weird first person cockpit view that allowed you to kind of swivel and shoot from. And it was really disturbing. Uh, on the Wii U. On, on the, the Wii U, U yeah. yes. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And so it was really. Yeah. It was just a disorienting experience that I did not enjoy. It was even made by Platinum Games, a studio I love for Bayonetta and Vanquish, um, but even Mad World, but it's not great. And I feel like, so kind of to tie back into Starlink, I guess, I, it makes me really wonder what I would want from an actual Star Fox game. Like if we could design our own, because here's the thing, like I think the weakest elements of Starlink, and I've only played probably 10 hours max, like the the weakest elements I find are like, I don't really enjoy scanning like the animals i think that's more that's more rewarding feeling in no man's sky like because it's the animal feels like a true discovery like you can name it and you're like this thing is actually my discovering it versus like this thing looks like a large antelope like i'm not that engaged in starlink <laughs> you're like how do the people who've been mining this planet for generations not know what this never have this and then like well speaking <laughs> why of them, like, right. the database? i don't also, think why the are mining the, why is why is everyone here a miner or a scientist <laughs> where are well, like exactly the where, are the, where are the teachers <laughs> the, like for like going around you know it feels like it's a weird hybrid between and something that is no no man's sky but also like an assassin's creed there's so many there are a lot of icons a lot of outposts to scan there's a lot of things to unlock yeah. to reveal more mm -hmm. of the map and I, I find the combat fun and i really like going from the ground version to the hover mode and then up into the interplanetary stuff but the i almost wish and a star fox assault is not my favorite star fox by any means but i part of me kind of wishes like I would like to get Star Fox out of the ship. And I know that's like yeah. sacrilegious. You know, ever hated that about adventure. There was this really tacked on kind of gummy ship ask for kingdom hearts, like move between the planets and we're mm -hmm. in the R wing for like two seconds. And then the final boss is also in the R wing. And you're like, wow, I've barely practiced in this. And now here's like a somewhat <laughs> yeah, hard final right. boss. And the, um, but that said, like I, I would almost have more fun if it were Fox and I were running around and doing things on planets. Right. And then, jumping in the r-wing or summoning the r-wing a la the horse and red dead or right witcher or metal gear and then taking off to the next planet more so than i find like the like the close to the surface movement a little clumsy like jumping i find strange and like a Picking and dragging yeah, rocks. Trying to and jump stuff. on some of the, like the structures. Like you can tell they want you to kind of hover onto things and like even some of like the like giant lily pad trees, you're like, okay, like Breath of the Wild Matt is like thinking I should be hopping up to this, what's up there? And there's nothing up there. But mm -hmm. it's like you kind of the, they designed it as if to be like stepped on and then like a lot of the refineries and factories all have those like like disjointed ramps that you're supposed to kind of yeah, hover and jump on right. and get more stuff but it is a little it's a little janky in the way it's that like, like, you're like i like fall off this 
you know, this yeah, thing. And you know what I, I liked in Star Fox Zero where you would be the walker, like that yeah, strange that walker cool. that was also from Star Fox 2, and you'd transform into it, and you'd run around with a little ATST looking like chicken leg walker, and then all of a sudden <laughs> it would flip into the, the ship, and you'd take off, like it was a really cool transition. And I almost wish, and I know this isn't a Star Fox game, but if we saw another one, or Ubisoft got the race to make an actually Star Fox game, wouldn't be surprised, right? You look at Toys for Bob, and they started with Spyro and then they made the very popular Skylanders Toys to Life series, right? And they kind of transitioned away from needing Spyro and now then Toys to Life kind of died down and then they made the Spyro remaster that was really good and came out last year. Like you could almost see Ubisoft, hey, we have Starlink and we brought on Star Fox to make it a little more popular. And then that was the popular nugget that sold the best on Switch. Now we're going to make an actually Star Fox game. It's a culmination of what we yeah. learned from those other ones. And um I almost it would almost be more exciting if we don't get Star Fox out of the ship, which would be fine, to have like maybe you switch between Walker, Landmaster, and you know, R Wing and that's how you explore yeah. and that's how you interact. Um, and right. there are linear segments where you're shooting. You know, the the dog fighting in Starlink probably never feels quite as good as the best like fighting in Star Fox sixty four, but the exploration of Starlink is very good and really impressive that it can run on a switch. Like it is amazing. They, yeah. they really do a nice job masking the loading when you leave the kind of the atmosphere of the one planet into space like it looks mm -hmm. awesome like they've done a very nice job i love how you can see objects like uh as you're on the planet and you look up and you can see like an object off in the distance and like as you're traveling to it it kind of you know it kind of moves with the concave of the planet and yeah. like it you know then it kind of really gets put in the, like the location that it's at and it just it makes the whole world feel more alive and like more yeah. interesting to explore. And I think they did that part really well. But to your point about like Star Fox getting out of the cockpit, like I think I think if they had the budget uh, and or Nintendo was like, you know what, you did a great job with this. You should just make this a whole force. Like that would be ideal. Cause I remember when I first went, flew back to the, uh, I want to say Axiom because uh, Wally, but uh, the Equinox. <laughs> <laughs> the Equinox. Yeah. Uh, Great that's gym. so funny. <laughs> but um, the next crossover. Right, right. Uh, anyways, um, plant. <laughs> uh, please put that in the podcast. <laughs> what Eve saying, plant. <laughs> okay, um, I'll do what I can. I'm sorry, Disney <laughs> Pixar, but I'm taking that please. voice clip. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, but I, I was expecting to like walk around the ship. Yeah, I'm like, you, you have this that. beautiful, huge ship, and and I remember Danny when you were showing me a little bit of No Man's Sky when we were when we were over at your place for the first time playing co-op. I was like, oh, that's cool. I should be able to do that in the ship, right? No, you you upgrade the Equinox in your start menu, like you upgrade everything in the right. game. Like I flew the three minutes it took or whatever to like get to the Equinox yeah. in like hyper mode, and I'm like, oh yeah, we're here. How do I get, get the in? fast travel ability? Right. Right. Yeah, but. Uh, <laughs> But basically, that's... go for it. Well, I was going to say that's a good point. Like, it's really exciting No Man's Sky when you go to the space station. And you fly in yeah. there and you walk around. Mm -hmm. like, And it feels like brrr, you like landed and you docked. And there's these other strange ships. And like you feel like, oh, there's this whole, this whole you know, there's all these various ecosystems all taking place on, right. on these planets. But then the, the people that are, explore kind of converge in these more right. mix, uh, yeah. you know, space stations. And that would be a great way because like in assault it's not that fun like to run around and shoot things the rocket launcher stuff is like not good it feels like it was kind of between like oh halo 2 was out at the time and you could jump between a warhog and a ghost and kick people off right. it felt like they're trying to kind of adopt that um and it didn't really work very well but if you could walk around like fox and social spaces which is how like destiny works or like how anthem uh, is about to be working when it launches in first person mode and then when you leave you're in your ship and maybe the ship then transforms between walker and because, yeah. you know, whenever Fox is running around outside of Smash Bros, it's not great, but it would be fun to have him walking in this world. And I actually really love in Starlink. I find the characters to be generic and extremely boring, but I do like the little like you can get the backstories, the comic book stuff, which is yeah. neat. But yeah. then the other thing I like about it is because Fox does feel like he could live in this place. Like there are other oh, monsters that are on the Starlink team. Not, you know, no offense to them. I'm sure they're nice guys when to get to know him, but like they look strange and alien. And so like Fox and his team, like it's, it's a Fox wearing like a vest, but it fits like pretty well. Yeah. And I think it goes a nice way to like, it makes them seem like their own kind of cool race of, of creatures and stuff that fit into like a world where anything is possible. Whereas like, if you think about everyone just like in Fox and animal form, it's always like a little confusing and like a little icky and like a little, like, why are these things wearing these things? Why is crystal dressed this way? But it, when it, when you consider it more as like, <laughs> these are just like how this alien race looks, I think like, 
I really enjoyed that. It felt it it made it feel more believable. It made me feel like I could encounter Samus and stuff as Fox, and it would make oh, sense. Oh, totally. You know, it, um, you want you want that Mario Kart uh, eight slash Super Smash Brothers. Like you're like, oh my gosh, Nintendo build out this universe. Like I would love to see like like the Fox characters uh, interacting in a world where like some other anthropomorphic thing shows up, and you're like, that makes sense because it's Star Fox. Like yeah. I, like it's, it's weird. Space. It's alien. Like it's right. perfect for that. And it'd be fun to see him walking around or play as Falco or like right. play as, you know, Cat or any any of the weird Bob or the dog is like all the other weirder ones that you don't really mm-hmm. see. Like, you know, maybe you encounter them and they're working on something or Peppy's like, hey, I have this upgrade tree that you're yeah, like, yeah. do you want to oh, have more of an attack cool. vehicle or a stealth vehicle or more of a speed vehicle? Like build it out that way, because something I know we've talked about off off air before is I, I feel like the game you can really feel kind of the the framework of the toys to life game, right? Where like when you go into the menu, it looks not great in star. Like, like it looks really clunky, right? Operating between like equipping and unequipping things. I still have a hard time figuring out like, what, what am I equipping my ship? When am I equipping my pilot? When am I like, how do I unequipped even Weapon, this like yeah. flamethrower? Yeah, I just want the generic R wing thing on there. It's like, well, then use a different menu and it feels like, Oh, like it's this added layer they put on there when they kind of saw like the toy aspect isn't going to fly. We need a digital version. It feels like they just kind of plastered this, layer on top of an existing game i think doing it again from more of the ground up but using the successes of this game would make for a really great sequel danny any final like final thoughts on on starlink in terms of like maybe some one or two things you like absolutely love about it and maybe something you would like to see change if there's a sequel fire landmaster yeah i mean i'm certainly on board with austin as far as like assault i enjoyed uh i realize it's not the best um mostly for I, the but i do right? wish Right, or right. Yeah, you're just team. sitting on the side of the wing, <laughs> and Falco's like, "Hey, give me some cover, would you?" <laughs> yeah, I'll just stand on your wing while you fly <laughs> at like 200 miles an hour. It's fine. Strap um, in Put those magnet boots. Right. So, like, because he's got robot mm-hmm. legs, it's not they're not just real, like right? um, of course. But yeah, too uh, soon. Yeah, so, yeah. like, I I realize it's not the best version, but it's still the right concept that I hope. I do hope a that Ubisoft gets the. Um, rights to do like just a full fledged Star Fox game, um, and I hope that they I they mean, look Star at Fox Assault Battle for Corneria. That's the that's the hope. <laughs> yeah, kind of. I mean, we want to go back to that system and retread that story again. Cool, but like, yeah, let's get down to the ground of it. I I hope that they look at the blueprint for Assault. I kind of hope they look at the blueprint for Breath of the Wild. Like, get out of the ship, but then like that's what space exploration should look like on foot. Of all the things they borrow from No Man's Sky, um, I think what they have borrowed is great. I actually don't want them to borrow the on foot stuff too, too much because yeah, um, for open world games, we now have a better thing for you to mimic um, in house yeah. uh, in Nintendo house for you to borrow. Um, so for a sequel, I, yeah, I really am hoping um, for like some kind of open space concept still again. Um, maybe some parts of it can be on rails again mm-hmm. where like you just have to keep moving forward and shooting stuff. But I, I would prefer it to mostly be kind of this open open exploration again yeah it fits the the dog fights well just like when you fight star wolf in those games and you're like oh it's leon and panther and you know pigma yeah, it feels like all range mode yeah, all over again. and those are good it would be i don't know how you incorporate the linear stuff but you can make it work and I, it's like some of the best games i've played in recent years metal gear solid 5 phantom pain being one of them it's like there's such a fun element where it's like you're in this world it's all built around the tools you have and then you can summon in like the helicopter and get out of the mission or even just like extract and get away when you're when you've been spotted or pulling the horse or like how neat would it be to have some areas where you could crawl around or something as fox and then all of a sudden like summon the r-wing and it flies in and you jump in it just like arkham knight like for batman yeah. with the you know you have the batmobile yeah. so you're like doing all the stuff batman <coughs> does which we know you know so you've got battering it's a grappling hook it's got a gravelly voice he's got a bad attitude but then like you have you know you're doing all the batman things and all of a sudden it's like you grapple into the into the Batmobile and then now you're crushing through geometry and like you know um, you're not killing anyone but you're definitely hitting them lightning quick and, and but it's like it totally mixes up how you use that space and like what if same thing what if you're exp- exploring dinosaur planet or something with fox on foot and then you summon in the <laughs> oh, r-wing and it so comes cool flying in and he does game. like a big jump assassin's creed style jump off the building you're on into the r-wing tricky is at the wheel and you know just wants to play for a bit just wants to be touched but then but then you fly you on think the he could still thing. fit in the under part of the r-wing now you think he's you like, think like, like he could gained just like a little bit 
<laughs> I would love to see like a oh, 2019 versus 2009 challenge for Tricky, and like, you see him, <laughs> you see him <laughs> throwback Thursday. Yeah, he's, yeah. Like, not, right. he's not like great now. He's got like a jewel. Fox, look! The healing mushrooms only grow inside the ancient well. So I want to I wanna transition us now to the next game. Starlink's been great. It's fun. I think I, I'm going to still play it all the way through. I know, Danny, you are. Austin, yeah, I'll keep playing it. Dan, Austin's got like 25 games he needs to play through. I do, um, yeah, But he'll yeah. get well, there. Busy, I'm a busy man. <laughs> um, so let's talk about Wargroove. Oh, my goodness. Sweet, sweet Wargroove. Um, so I'm excited. Uh, Danny, you have not gotten this yet, right? So you're kind of like, we're selling you that on this now? That is correct. Okay. Yeah, cool. please sell me away. Right. Give me your sell pitch. Sell me. Um, so I uh, grew up playing Advance Wars uh, and absolutely loved it. So I jumped right into this game and immediately was like, please don't teach me anything. Like, I'm ready For to sure. go. Um, and though the tutorial was like still still felt, I was like, wow, this is like right out of Advance Wars. Like, mm -hmm. um, we have like someone showed up and like we need to take out their two soldiers. This is how you attack them. Right. Um, <laughs> And it's cool how it's slowly, um, for especially for Danny, for you, like it'll show you like, okay, it'll introduce new unit types as you're playing through the campaign um, and introduce you to like, hey, this is how you should do it. And you have like a, you're, you know, you start off as Queen Mercia and you have this like mentor, Emmerich, and Emmerich is basically telling you like, like, you know, oh, you'll be great at this. You're gonna be do a great think warrior. He should have been named Jemmerick because he has the gems <laughs> around him. I always think like, oh, what just a missed opportunity. Like obviously Mercy is come like Mercy. Emmerich, yeah. come on, Jemmerick, my boy. You're sitting on a gem mine. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know why when yeah. I when I see Mercia and Emmerich, I just think of like together like Murica. Like oh, you're, you're shipping them together. You think that's the hint? Yeah, at I the do. end, America prevails, yeah. baby. Yeah, he's been watching. It's kind of like it's kind of like Sir Jorah and. Um, uh, her, his relationship with uh, with Danny, and it's very much like that. That's what mm -hmm. it feels like. Her dad dies, and like he's protecting her. But and it's also weird because the game actually starts you off playing as the uh, as mm -hmm. the antagonist for a quick second, and basically murdering the king. <laughs> it's like yeah, it is. What? It's kind of a neat way. So I just want to say on that. So you mentioned Advance Wars, and going into it, everyone's like, "Oh, it's Advance Wars meets Fire Emblem," and I love Fire Emblem, and I like Advance Wars. But the thing I love about Fire Emblem is I love the characters. I love like having each unit is kind of its own hero class. You're leveling them up. And those are aspects that aren't really represented in this game. But it starts no. out, which I thought was very clever, with playing as one character that feels very Fire Emblem-y. It's it just one in unit. A, in a castle setting, In too. a castle setting, exactly. And it is like a great transition because we've had so many more contemporary Fire Emblem games. Yeah. And that's like a fun start. And I, so I've been, and then to have those hero units on the field, which you had to get a few missions in before they even start letting you do that, it feels way more Fire Emblem than I had expected. It really is yep. an interesting synthesis. Now, I think Days of Ruin on the DS did have hero units as well, but the way they look in the medieval setting, obviously, uh, it they're, feels they're, more Fire Emblem-ish, and that's yep. really exciting. On, on top of it, it just looks fantastic. The game is a perfect emulation of what was great about the Game Boy Advance, Advance Wars games. Yeah, I, I, it, it absolutely looks great. It looks better on your TV. Uh, or actually, excuse me, it, I think it looks better on your handheld when you're playing it like that. And especially when you zoom out. It'd like, be hot take. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, I, I prefer it that way. It, it, there are some things about the game that have irked me. I've already actually tweeted at uh, Wargroove. Chuckle Wargroove fish. parentheses out now. Um, no. Well, their Wargroove specific mm -hmm. Twitter mm -hmm. account. Um, and no. they're like, hey, are we working on our next update? Um, one of the big things was like, uh, if you like, you highlight a unit, right? Because mm -hmm. you're like, I need to figure out what um, mm -hmm. what their weaknesses, what you know, what they're effective against. All it does at the moment is show you a very tiny, like, yeah, like can't tell sixteen bit like sprite or icon. And you're like, I can barely tell what unit that is. Now, like, they're like, they showed a little like preview that they're going to be. You can highlight over them, and it'll tell you what that unit is, and it'll mm -hmm. it'll show you more percentages, which is helpful. Yeah, I'm thinking right, I've been really... Yeah. Oh, go for it, go for it. I was going to say, because, yeah, right now you see a picture of that unit, and then I'm going into, like, the glossary, and I'm scrolling down and saying yeah. which unit yeah. matched that Weird. photo. Yeah. And yeah. it's not as, like... I feel like in, in Advance Wars, I don't know why, but kind of like the, you know, the the artillery beats this, this beats mm -hmm. our, you know, whatever. Like, it's not as, like, 
It's not as easy to visually organ, see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyways, the, the one thing I tweeted at them was like, I, so when you're done, you hover over an idle, you know, uh, square acre, mm-hmm. or, you know, and you, you press a, and you go to end your game in advanced wars, the end game was at the bottom of that, of yeah, that fire emblem that drop well. list. Right. Yeah. And so you don't actually press a, a, and then instantly end mm-hmm. the game. Well, <laughs> or end your turn. I've ended my turn so many times, so prematurely that it's infuriating because I lose ground. The enemy starts moving around. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my god! I there's was like no in the worst position. There's no, so you there's lose no way to save in a mission. There's no way to save. Right. Yeah. So th- those are my quick little uh, issues with the game. However, like it is beautiful. It is very. It is a very challenging game. Um, mm-hmm. And I think my favorite part so far has been uh, the side missions. You know, like you can play the story all the way through but it, it offers you know these branching trees of like go over here and then you, you'll walk over there and it'll basically highlight a, one of a particular character that you have and it's like you have to play as that character like the dog mm-hmm. caesar caesar has his own like side story where he like constantly is beating back uh uh rebels or or something who keep trying to like mess up cities and like they're all afraid rebels of this dog, dog. Mm-hmm. and those his side quests are so hard oh, now like i've be i've beaten them but I'm getting my worst grades in all of them. I'm just like barely squeaking by. They're yeah, either I, like, yeah. go for it. I'm just gonna say, I, am I terrible at this game? Because like, I feel like I'm quite good at Fire Emblem, like play on my hard and whatever. It's still a challenge or reset a lot. But this game, I'm getting like one and two stars on the early missions. I'm like, am I just trash at this? I'm not in the mode of making yeah. the units again. And it's tough. Like I find myself yeah. I'm like, am I losing because it's hard or losing because I'm just really terrible? I haven't lost yet, right. but like it's been tense in a way where I'm like, well, I'm, they're still teaching me things. Like how am I? so trash just right generally and i think the way it's like fire emblem like you were saying is and the reason i think it's more challenging than i think advance wars was right off the bat is because they put you into the, the each each map isn't just like a map hey go at it like you need to capture those cities take out the enemy like no it's like you are given way less units or there's some sort of puzzle to it like the the map i'm stuck on right now is I have to get a group of my troops through this basically maze of a map to this like point where they can escape. And I'm being chased by soldiers. And every turn, more soldiers are coming out from every, like more units are showing up all over the map. Now I've got these like five units, right? And I got to get them all the way around. However, I have, um, I have this other group of units who are like trying to get to them to kind of provide support. But at the same time, they're trying to basically capture city. And I've I've probably eat that map I've played twice, and it's taken me about 45 minutes to an hour. And both times I like just barely get to them and they kill off my um they kill off my commander. And I'm just like, gosh! I, I've never had that like uh cringing like experience before in an advanced wars game. And I love it because it's challenging me to get better, but mm-hmm. like this is only like this is the third act mission one. So I don't know. It's so much fun, but very, very challenging. Now, yeah. Dan, Danny, do you ever see, you've seen screenshots, you've seen gameplay, you've seen the fun little anime. Do you see yourself ever like playing a game like this? Like, would you jump online and play, you know, uh, against, and you could play three, ver, you know, th- mm-hmm. three versus three or three versus three. You could play three players, which would be really awesome for an AMP plays. But yeah, I mean, like I know um, I haven't, I was about to say, I don't think I've ever played a game like it. It's not exactly the same, but I think it's got a lot of similarities, like the Halo Wars games. You know, it's a lot of troop combats that you're building up. You're trying to defend one area um, and attack yeah. another. Um, just in turn base, It's got right? some yeah. similarity. Yeah, just inside of the turn base. And um, uh, I mean, you, you were describing a mission right now that actually was a storyline mission in Halo Wars. Like you uh, only had so many troops in Halo Wars 2. And you had to survive right. while you're being chased from behind, and everywhere you're going forward, you had more enemies too. Yeah, um, you're and so one you're of kind the of very being... few people on the YouTube space who played through Halo Wars Two. I loved the first <laughs> one, but no one that I know has oh. played the second one. And I enjoyed it. So it was actually the flood was that mission. You rediscover the flood, even though we thought it was eliminated. We never and... truly thought they were eliminated. <laughs> I just want to say <laughs> well, for the know. record, but yes. Yeah. No one in Infinity War is actually dead. But anyways, um, yeah, so it was kind of like that. You know, the Flood's chasing from behind. You got Flood attacking you from all sides. What I'm getting at, I feel like perhaps part of me is just kind of stubborn now that I'm into this 
modern gaming area, looking at something like it is just like, I just don't know if I have the patience or like the mental wherewithal to play something that's like the old fashioned. Mm-hmm. Is it is it aesthetically you know, like it, it looks like um, a throwback? Because and so it doesn't it's got draw like you that in? old. Yeah, it just doesn't necessarily draw me yeah, in. So it doesn't mean I wouldn't like the play style. But it's funny because you're the that, exact yeah. kind of person I feel like would really enjoy it, like really get into it and enjoy playing in the online battles versus your friends. So I'm going to, my homework, my AMP homework is to get Danny to play. We're going to try to do an AMP plays. I would love to do an AMP plays with you, Austin, over yeah, online. But. And I like the asynchronous online play. And I love yeah. turn-based games and I love grid-based uh, you know, tactical games, Final Fantasy Tactics, Fire Emblem, and the like. And so... They're a favorite genre of mine. I think this is really strong. Um, you know, I, I think I'll always love Fire Emblem, particularly because I like kind of grinding and feeling like I'm overpowering the enemies. And I'm not so much He's based on my decisions, but so much as like I put in the time. I made those beautiful relationships. I got those kids from the future in Fire Emblem. But like, I like <laughs> yep. that grind, the grind time to then power up and hit a mission that I was having trouble with previously. Advanced. The- <laughs> Hashtag grind time. <laughs> Look, the NP grind time. Talk about your favorite grinds. Okay, so you summon the, this generic enemy and you defeat him 400 times and you make his characters love each other. But um, <laughs> you can't do this in this type of game. It's more, and that's more traditional strategy, but I like, I like the heroes. It looks amazing. It sounds great. I... A group, there's like a, a few quality of life things but i feel like i'm really just nitpicking them because everything else in the game is so yeah. strong like i yeah. i think the game is a little squishy like in comparison to fire emblem even like fire emblem i especially because i just had the the muscle memory down from all the games i, I played in recent years but it's like yeah like matt you had said i hit a in an open space and i hit up on the d-pad to go to the bottom yeah. of that menu hit a yeah. and turn and so i'm still doing that it doesn't work but also like when you take out an enemy it's not quite as like you know, Fire Emblem had this great slash and then you feel like you really yeah. like, you know, encounter them or you you take them out with a decisive blow in the same way that like the final smash of Marth looks like in Super Smash Brothers. Like it has that great like snappiness um, to it where it feels like the sprites and even like when you defeat an enemy it has like a cute ghost comes out. It looks amazing, but the whole game, it just feels a little, a little squishier, not quite as responsive, um, but it is still excellent. Uh, like the you know, when you go to attack with the unit, it doesn't automatically put the cursor right on the only enemy you could hit. You have to like move it from the main character to yeah. the target. And if you're using a ranged character, it's like kind of annoying because it's like, I can only hit this one. So why doesn't the cursor default on them? And there's no way to hit like L or R and snap to an enemy unit. You can't click on a group of enemies, click with the ranges and have that range disp- continue to display when you right. go to choose you're your like- unit, like which you can if I'm them, which is nice because you're like, okay, well, I want to stay within one square of this. So I'm constantly right. going, okay, it's so a third pebble near the lake i can't cross that I'm gonna remove that like danny if the enemy has a trebuchet you know and you're like oh shit i gotta get well, pika gotta get past yeah. it um and you know like in advanced wars it was so easy to like highlight the trebuchet and see mm-hmm. like okay like this is how close it gets to me and, and it could remain and highlighted could, when you move and you can remain highlighted in this game you have to hold it and you gotta go count and be like Okay, I'm gonna unhighlight it and then move my unit and yeah. hope to God I didn't these mess are like up. Really small things, but yeah, it's yeah. only and I think it's easier to rag on these things. And I think I see other people doing it because the game is so strong. Like, yeah, it's You're amazing like, just, that it's I'm an indie game in the first place. Like, I, I'm sure yeah. it's a small team. Like, I feel like the hype is really high, and it's not even because of anything Chucklefish has done on Twitter or anything. Just people are excited about a game this well made. It returns to a formula we haven't seen in a while. So these are all like, really small picks. Yeah, but it has yeah. tons of content. You can make maps, you can make scenarios, you can play multiplayer live yep. or, you know, I'll make a move, put my Switch away. Then when Matt, you boot it up at some point on Wi-Fi, you make a move and we could play through a whole game like that. That's amazing. Like, yeah, it's such, such a classic implementation. And it's so smart. Danny, if you don't want it on Switch, you can get it on Xbox and we can still play together, which is You can play with every fantastic. console except for PlayStation. Except for PlayStation 4, um, which is... Which is really cool, <laughs> especially if you want to see it like in its full like HD. Like it, when I first saw it at PAX East, it was on the Xbox and it was bright and beautiful and it was everything I loved about the Advanced Wars and series. Crisp and yeah, and except yeah. in 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 1080p. So that was really cool. Um, yep, I agree with everything you were saying, yeah. Austin. I think it's great. Um, we'll, I think we'll talk more about it in future future weeks. Probably yeah. kind of start wrapping it. But I, I really want to do an AMP place. But it's been fun talking about it, and I'm excited because again, their latest tweet was, "Hey, we're working on updates already, and yeah. this is the kind of game where you're like, they're they're taking user feedback seriously." Yeah. So, all right, Matt, Danny, take us home. We're gonna play. So, 
Amen. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this hopefully shorter AMP. Uh, we'll see you all. In the, nah, we'll see you all in the next one. Uh, and if you're craving that AMP content, we hope you enjoy the next episode, which is completely. Um, a uh, behind the scenes look at what it's like <laughs> when we talk to each other before we were check it out on YouTube. <laughs> Until then, we'll see you all later. Bye. Bye. Farewell. But it was fun, though, wasn't it? Crystal!